Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 13th, 2021 regular scheduled school board meeting. Before we begin the work of the district, let us stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Superintendent. Good evening. Um, what are there any changes to tonight's agenda? No. All right. Hearing none. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I need to stop you. Mrs. Luke, you have a statement? Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to let everyone know that I am following CDC guidelines and in quarantine from a direct exposure, which is why I am present only in uh, voice this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Luke. I'm sorry, Superintendent. Go ahead. So I recommend approval of the minutes from the regular school board meeting August 9th, 2021 and the regular school board meeting August 23rd, 2021. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 4-0. Okay. Now we're at public input. So we'll start with Christine Palmer. Hello, board. Um, I'm Christine Palmer, and I am here to talk about and honor Tammy Jerkins. So if I could uh, just have three minutes of your time. Um, I participated in the Florida LEAD program in July. And um, that's all of the alumni, district teachers of the year and state teachers of the year, as well as the current. And she was honored and memorialized three times. I did not really know her that well. I just met her the night that I became district teacher of the year a couple years ago. So I didn't really understand the impact that she has made, not only on us, but the state. So I'd like to share some kind of testimonials. There were three things that, three different ways in which she was honored. One was the big gala in which um, her family was present and um, Hannah Wilkes of Jackson County was given the Tammy Jerkins Distinguished Educator Award. Um, so so that, that was something. And then during that day, during our PD, we had two separate rooms. We had the alumni and we had the current district teachers of the year. So all the big wigs at the district, uh, I mean at the state, w went to the new district teachers of the year and presented to them how awesome Tammy was. Um, and then they came over to us directly after, not a dry eye in any of their faces. Um, and so <clears throat> I was amongst this, uh, this alumni who most of them knew her because they did this work together. And I was in awe of the testimony that they had to say about her. Um, some of the things that I heard was, Everybody was surprised at the kindness that she gave everyone else. So in other words, somebody mentioned that they loved a restaurant in Umatilla and she would send them an autographed book of the chef there. Um, and then somebody else, and everybody was surprised by all of these good deeds that she did on the down low. And so the more we heard about that, the more we're all crying and other people are standing up saying, oh, well, you know what she did for me, blah, 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 blah. The only person that kind of had a, um, a bone to pick with her was the teacher, the state teacher of the year that followed her because she showed up at the at Tallahassee, at Tallahassee with nothing. And they're like, where's our food? Tammy usually brings us baked goods. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so she was just really well known. But what really motivated me to come here today to talk to you was one testimony of a teacher who said that um, one of her speeches talking about mentoring students in high school she implement a mentorship program in her high school that has now grown to other schools in that district. So I wanted to be sure that we knew at this state level, at this level that is on public record, that Tammy Jerkins made an impact statewide by teachers and students and that we should all be very proud. Yes, thank you. And we are proud of you, Mrs. Palmer. And also, what an amazing thing that you've done to honor her. She was amazing. Thank you very much. 
Okay, Michael, is it Johnson? Mr. Johnson, if you'll give your name and address, and you have three minutes, sir. Sure, Michael Johnson, 10807 V Capri Lane in uh, Claremont. Um, thanks for letting me talk. I was actually here Thursday night for the mass meeting, and you know, not to beat a dead horse or anything, but um, I actually asked to speak at the end, but I didn't realize how it all worked out in, in reality, so I just wanted to come back real quick. And, um, and I didn't want to speak originally, but I kind of want to speak now, because it's, as time went on, it's like, I was talking about mask work, don't work, and we had the gentleman with the, the vape and everything else, and having five different masks up there, and what everyone doesn't get in reality is that, you know, when things that masks don't work, they're, they're completely wrong. You know, masks actually do work ex exactly how they're supposed to work right now, and that's actually to divide us and create fear for our kids at the end of the day. Um, two things can be true at the same time. You know, this could be a horrible, horrible, deadly virus. My family's in healthcare. My work, work, my wife works at the PCU. They lose people all the time. It's been a lot better lately, though. I have a mechanism works, by the way. Go find it. Um, but at the same time, you know, this this whole thing could be planned and instilled on us. You know, from the WHO, the CDC, and all these people. You know, there's a reason why Fauci, Fauci flip flops all the time. The CDC keeps changing the numbers is to kind of keep us all confused on what's going on up here. And it, it all comes down to our kids at the end of the day. You know, they go to school. They they are they're scared to talk to each other. They're scared to get in touch with each other. My son is um, one of my sons, special needs and everything else. But someone told me he was sick the other day because they didn't have his mask on and put on your mask because you're sick. It's like, well, he is sick technically. You know, special needs and everything else, kidney problems and all that. But at the same time, why is someone telling him that he's sick when? It's just not the fact. Um, so the same people that created the virus, the same people that patented this virus, and it's all been proven, the same people that funded this virus to be created are arguably the same people that are telling us what to do with this virus and how to fight it, which to me just doesn't really make sense while we're taking any of their information um, as it is. You know, they, they want us, <laughs> they want to shut down, they want to push these vaccines, they keep on getting richer at the end of the day, and um, as all of our kids actually suffer at school. So. I feel for you guys. You guys have the hardest job out there. It's like there, there's two sides out there and, and like which way to go at the end of the day. I actually hold the, probably the, the least popular uh, uh, suggestion. That's actually to go back to how it was on 9-12-2001. Um, realize we're fighting a war. It's not the war that we did before. It's a different war. Uh, but actually just remove all masks at school completely. Yeah, you'll never do it, I know. But also um, stop contact tracing and stop this this incessive um, uh, testing of our kids, you know. If they're sick, they don't feel good, stay home. If you feel okay, go to school. I just don't know why we keep on every day. We get this phone call every day, it's just getting these kids. And the three-tier system, I get it, we did that up in New Hampshire. I was up in New Hampshire for the last year and a half, been a resident since 2006 here. And we did the same thing, but again, it's like, the, you still instill the fear in the kids over and over again, say, oh, we might actually get sick, we might actually, you know, just cut out the whole thing. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Kim Cronin. Good evening, Superintendent and Board Members. Um, tonight you'll be voting on the SEIU contract, um, and I want to let you know that the contract was overwhelmingly accepted by the employees. They were very happy to receive a, an experience step increase. Um, a lot of them are three to four years behind on that. So that was something that they were glad to see this year. Um, they're also glad to see their um, relief payment this weekend too. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Cronin. Okay, Superintendent, we start reports. All right, well, we're gonna start with um, Carmen Cullenbach with the Education Foundation report. Thank you, Chairman, School Board Superintendent. Apple Mart has had 139 teacher visits in the first four weeks that we've been open, and we've distributed, <coughs> excuse me, $10,425 in supplies. Um, years ago, we had an incredible relationship with the Walmart in Mount Dora, and that's been reestablished, and we're gonna be picking up a box truck full of overstaffed um, school supplies this week. So we're real excited about that. Um, the golf tournament is basically sold out. We've got a few foursomes left. Uh, Hans and Kay Jacobson are our presenting sponsors, and Rexel and ASI are our board sponsors. It's going to be held at Mission Inn on October the 15th. 
The Ren Fair cast, um, which is comprised of 100 uh, drama students, held their auditions um, the 21st of August, and they have begun practicing every Saturday. However, instead of the large 100 group, we have broken them out in small ensembles so that there's not more than eight or 10 kids that are in close proximity to each other. Teacher of the Year, Rookie Teacher of the Year, and school-related nomination forms were distributed to all the principals today, and the nominations are due to the foundation um, by October 7th. The auditor will be meeting with our Finance Committee to review the audit, um, which will go to the exec and then to the full board. Uh, this is a certified audit, which is part of the state statutes that we're required to um, provide to the school district and to this board each year. And it should be approved on the 25th of September. Um, the next board meeting, which we had originally scheduled for an in-person board meeting, has been changed to Zoom, and that will be on the 25th of um, September as well. And um, we installed our latest board member last month, and that is Chief Chuck Broadway. So we're excited to have some representation and his energy uh, joining our board. Are there any questions? You're doing amazing work. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to reiterate how special Tammy Jerkins was, not only to the foundation and in this district, but until you have spent a day with her in the spa, you'll never know the Tammy Jerkins I know. <laughs> Thank you. That's TMI. <laughs> okay, there's no one finished business. Superintendent? Mr. Johnson, do you have anything? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. Okay, now Superintendent. I was asked to pull items 8.10 and 8.11 for no action this evening, so they're coming off of the agenda. Um, and with that, I will recommend approval of consent agenda items 8.01 to 8.09 and 8.12 to 10.03. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4-0. Okay. We're already on reports. Mm -hmm. right, well, I have invited a special guest up for this evening. Um, we did launch our new dashboard, and so Mr. Weeks, the creator of our dashboard and his team, um, he's going to just give you a quick look at it. I'm sure you probably haven't had a chance to see it, yeah, but I asked him to just um, share it with you all this evening and the public to be able to see the dashboard and all the new features and how easy it is to, to keep up to date on everything that's happening in our schools. I'm really glad you had no Labor Day plans. Yeah, right. So thank you for rolling this out. <laughs> now I appreciate it. And yeah, uh, this thing is the best dashboard you'll ever have designed in two and a half hours. No, I'm just <laughs> to some extent. Um, so we did, uh, as soon as the board meeting concluded, we had gone ahead and started work. Uh, we were looking for a couple of things in this dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of show you, uh, give you a guided tour of the dashboard and tell you a little bit about why it was designed the way it was. Um, the first page, we felt like any dashboard needed a little bit of context. And so the first page is designed to kind of sort of basically uh, express what the goals of the dashboard are. Uh, if you don't necessarily have that purpose, you might be thinking it has, well, everything. And we have a very focused approach. And so we wanted to make sure that we were presenting the data and being as transparent as possible, but also where people understood what the dashboard was for, because there's a lot of different things you could include. And we've been building it out. Actually, if you look at the first version, 1.00, came out like, and then we immediately started updating it. So it will be kind of a living dashboard to some extent. Um, there is also some resources down there just to provide parents with extra information. So it's almost like a little bit of a mini site. Um, to get into the analytics for a second, a couple of things that we did, um, the superintendent had asked me to kind of revise the system. I will tell you this, um, it was kind of an interesting thing because at the beginning of this last little bit, we were reporting kind of to the health department and then that data was sort of trailing and coming to us. Uh, and so really the goal was to report to the health department and then we were taking metrics. Um, we reworked that a little bit starting on Monday, uh, last Monday actually, what we had is, is that we actually had a, uh, a new process in which schools at the end of every day reported their numbers. And so that allows us to not have to go through the entire maze 
of how the uh, health department was reporting because they have a lot of process they have to go on. It gives us data that we think is, I don't want to say necessarily more accurate, but it gives it to us in a format we can do more with as far as charts and graphs, and it gets it to us quicker. And so we thought that was kind of important. So with that said, on the daily information, you can start to see it build. You can see the first day here on September the 7th. And what you can see is, is that you can see, uh, you have the option to filter by site, so you can pick only one school or you can compare schools should you want to. Um, but regardless, if you look at the entire uh, district, it gives you a little bit of a snapshot of what the total positive count is and what these cumulative totals. And again, I, I know there was a little bit of consternation about, well, why doesn't it go back past September 7th? And that's because we really updated the collection system. And so September 7th is the first day that we collected using this method. We'll look at reformatting the data. The data was previously in a pretty tough format. If you scroll down, you can see student to staff. And so if you select those numbers or those filters up at the top, grade groups, you can look at the elementary schools. Again, it's a lot of information and you kind of get the chance to sort of click around. And then we also just today started working through the quarantine data and so you can start seeing as of this date. And we'll add a uh, date selector as we get a few more dates on us um, and get a filter into where you can't go past the day it started. Um, the next thing that we got though, and this was probably where a lot of the work went in, is that one of the things that we needed to do is, is that we knew as soon as the kind of, I won't say formula, but that's kind of the way that we looked at it, got approved uh, at the last board meeting, we needed to be able to, y'all approved it on Thursday and we knew on Friday we had to send out a bulletin basically on the data. And so what we did is, is that we took, it's not fully automated yet, but it's getting closer. Um, and basically what this does is this gives parents what I think is probably the thing that they're the most interested in, it's that current week school status. So it takes that formula of those rolling two weeks, it takes the number of positive cases, and then if somebody hits that 5% threshold, which we did not have this week, interestingly enough, we were kind of wondering, right, like as we were calculating and one got kind of close, but basically, uh, with that said, that 5% threshold would flag it as red. And so this is where parents will be able to find on a weekly basis, because that's the number one question, right, which is, did my, what, what status are we in this week? And so we'll continue, continue to monitor it. We also too, just to point it out because the public may be watching, like it, there's also too a question about like, well, what does red even mean, right? If they weren't attending the board meeting. And so we tried to put these resources in different areas and right here you can actually click here and you'll see something that you recognize, which is those mitigation strategies and those core indicators that we went through last time. Um, we got fancy. So we started adding maps today just to sort of see like where hot spots would be and things of that nature just because we thought it was curious and at some point we're just sort of flexing our IT muscle a little bit to see what we can do and what we can. Um, and then also too, there's past week school statuses that we'll archive as we go through this um, in our calculations. That way you can just sort of see what the journey is to some extent. Um, the other tab has the positive case history, which is about exactly what it sounds like, which is it goes week by week. Um, this data, like I said, is, uh, I believe the past data was accurate. It was just in a hard format. And so they're separate graphs. We will work on unifying them onto one graph because it's kind of nice to see those trend lines. But if I pick a site, then it will mm -hmm. reflect and I will be able to see the past weeks. And there's week four, three, and a little bit of a guide if I scrolled over on what those weeks mean. But you can basically see uh, if I pick a couple of schools just for fun, we'll pick there, and I don't know, there maybe, here. Then what you can do is you can kind of sort of see, it will actually go through and reflect. Astatool in this case had zero in the past week or this week currently, and then you can see how it reflects. And then you can see the different colored graphs to reflect students and staff, so just kind of there. Same with quarantine counts, basically the same structure, the same report, and again, we knew the uh, we knew the public was looking for that information. So I will say this is that if we were to look at the last dashboard, um, it was basically just a line list of as the cases were being worked, there was no graphs or no, no ability to click down. We'll continue to refine it. Uh, there is a form on the front that if uh, people have suggestions or find a, something that they're questioning as far as us checking the math or something like that, we're happy to look at it and then just continue for it to evolve as we go. How, how much time, I mean, I'm, I think parents are concerned about what's happening today more than they are. You spend an awful lot of your hours converting data that yeah, I, th there. I think the most important part is the daily information and what's so valuable about this is this part is automated. So as soon as the principals hit the button, it basically posts for that school right that second. So that was, you're exactly right in our case. 
it was kind of like, how could we take that out? Because we knew that was going to build. And you're right, like we wanted to take less of our time <laughs> in any way we could. This is outstanding work. Outstanding. Thank you very much. We're very, very happy to do it. Any comments? Thank you. Here you go. Right. Yeah, I, I, I love the, the ability to, to sort and, and really uh, gather all this information so easily. And um, But I, th I think one, one question folks are probably going to have is, is where, where did all last year's data go? Like even if it's not plugged in here, is there still a link there for somebody to access if they want to physically go in and make a comparison to last year or? Yeah, I think the trick would be the formatting would be a little different. We'll take a look at it for sure. Uh, we were in a rush to get this up right. because we knew the reports were coming up soon, but we can always look at old data. The good news is once you kind of build this in, if you can format the data according to how this uh, this dashboard operates, then you can start pouring the stuff in pretty fast. It just depends. Um, uh, that process uh, definitely like was pretty paper driven right, right, last right. time, so it's a little, you know, but I, but I think if there was an archive section, you can just right, right. look. I'm, I would not spend a lot of man hours. In time. Yeah, that, that's exactly where I am. Just like, is, is that link with all the Google uh, Sheets there still available that somebody could go click on sure. to, to see last year's information if they wanted? For sure, yeah, I don't think that's a problem at all. And I will never turn anyone down that says we have to do less work. Right. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary. You don't think it's necessary? I don't think you have to go to all this effort. No, no. Just, just have the link available from, just the, link from the old format. Just so, so somebody could. Mrs. Luke, do you have any comments? No, I am good. It's hard not being able to see it, so I'll take a peek. And if I do have any, I'll call you, Dwayne. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank, thank you very much, Dwayne. Appreciate it. Mr. Weeks. <laughs> it was certainly great as you look at the at the positive case counts from last week to see them go down every day and ending the week um, with district-wide 34 positive cases, which um, is, you go to the prior weeks, uh, every day we were looking at cases in the hundreds to, to see that dramatic drop-off that we, so many experts said within about six weeks, and we hit six weeks now, we should hopefully be on a downward trend. So I'm hoping that um, that that is what we're seeing. We saw a little bit of an uptick today, but remember your Monday counts are always higher because that includes anything that was posted Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, and then the day on Monday. So to see um, 61 compared to the start of last of last week, which was 142, which was actually an additional day because it, it started on Tuesday because of Labor Day. So um, it's holding steady again today, which means fewer of our kids are getting sick, fewer kids are being quarantined, fewer of our staff are being sick, which is what we're all praying for. So it's great that we can, can see that. So thank you, Mr. Weeks, to you and your team. Um, I know they spent hours and hours and hours getting this together to make sure that we could turn it around very quickly. Um, so I'm very grateful for all your work, and it does look great. Um, I had just a few other comments. First of all, we had some letters of condolence. Um, one that was sent to Annette Toadley. She's the data entry operator at Groveland Elementary School. Um, she lost her husband, Pat. Also, Rebecca Bruce is a food service assistant at Eustace Middle. She lost her mother, Lori Spires. Charlene Gore claims management specialist in a risk management and niece of Jeffrey Williams, principal at Claremont Elementary. So Jeffrey and Charlene lost their niece, um, Gwenisa Sam. So condolences to them. And just want to mention that tomorrow starts round two for all of the students that um, are eligible for vaccinations. We uh, vaccinated almost 300 students in round one, which the health department called and said that was one of the highest that they'd seen. Um, we have 35% of our students now vaccinated, according to the health department. It was 22, and we jumped to 35%, so significant effort there. A lot um, um, of our, our schools promoting that. So just a reminder to parents whose child needs their second dose that those are starting um, this they should have the schedule and they start tomorrow. And anyone who wants to begin round one can, can follow the schedule as well. There's a press release that went out earlier today from Ms. Owens with all the dates and the times and locations of those events. So we're grateful for the health department um, hosting those and making sure that we're able to provide those to all eligible students and staff who want them. So, and that's all I had for this evening. Thank you very much. Mrs. Luke, we'll start with you. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, just to make sure that it's hard for me to hear. We're on board member comments, correct? We, we can way hear you. You are very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Is that correct? 
What was that? We're on board member comments. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Um, I just wanted to speak fairly quickly. I did not say um, thank you to Mr. Weeks and his team. Obviously, that was a lot of work. And I uh, wanted to reiterate the superintendent's comments about the number of cases and seeing that decline. And we had talked originally at the beginning of the school year about a six-week spike, and now hopefully we will see those numbers come down. And so we are all prayerfully thankful for that, and that we'll continue to see that trend, hopefully. Um, I also wanted to thank Mr. Carr and Ms. Randall. We have two items on the agenda tonight with the use of high school softball field and the Mount Dora high school football field. We appreciate your work on moving towards a more proactive way to maintain our athletic fields. And um, I also wanted to say thank you to um, SEIU and Mr. Farnsworth and his team so that we could, we could get those raises on the agenda this evening. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mrs. Cunningham. Good evening. Uh, I guess the thing that I would like to bring everyone's attention to uh, is there was a lot of positive, there were a lot of positive things on the consent agenda tonight. Um, despite our difficulties, we're doing great work in Lake County. There's a lot of stuff going on um, that I think you should be very proud of. And to staff, certainly a lot of these items could not happen without you. So I hope you know that your individual efforts are appreciated. Um, I think that the students, parents, and any other stakeholders that are involved with Lake County are very fortunate. Uh, I'd again like to express my sincere appreciation to both um, SEIU and LCEA, along with any other stakeholders and taxpayers that have come forward the last month or so and shared with us your opinions, whether you know we all agreed or not. I think it's a wonderful thing that we were able to share and be able to come out, I think, on the side of what's good for students. So just a big thank you, and I think all of you deserve a pat on the back as well. That's all I have, sir. Mr. Dodd? Well, the, the drawback of going so late in the sequence of board members is that uh, we've, we've heard some of these points a thousand times, but, uh, but I was going to also express my thanks to uh, the relationships that we have with our, with our workers and, uh, and the LCA and SEIU. Uh, tonight was uh, very exciting to see the uh, first of the collective bargaining agreements come forth, and uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to the, the district and, and the LCA being able to negotiate uh, uh, the next one. I'm also uh, very thankful that uh, we as a district value all of our employees and that we recognized those that were not eligible for the $1,000 relief, disaster relief payments from the state, that we took care of those people. Um, I, I wish the state would recognize that all of these people were instrumental in bringing schools back open for our kids. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm thankful to be part of a district that recognizes and values all of its employees. And I'm also thankful for you, Christine Palmer, for coming here tonight to, to share some highlights of Tammy Jerkins. Um, I, it, it was a, a special day when we got to go into her classroom and, and tap her as a finalist. And I just remember the energy in that room. And I thought, this is a math room. <laughs> These kids are excited about math. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> you know? but, uh, but she had a, a real unique energy about her and, and the way that she connected with her kids. Um, this is absolutely amazing, and, and so it's, it's fun to hear some of those stories. So thank you for bringing those forward tonight. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I forgot something, if I may. Just you may. one minute. Um, you know, the great thing about Mrs. Jerkins is that she also left a legacy. Uh, I had the pleasure while principal at Carver Middle to actually hire her son, uh, and he is also an excellent math teacher. So while uh, Tammy may no longer be with us, Robbie will certainly be continuing that tradition. And I think that's just one of those remarkable things about the field of education. Every so often that happens. So I think the whole Jerkins family is a very, very special group of people. Thank you. And, and so this is the fortunate part of being here. I can just say ditto. <laughs> With this exception, that Tammy Jerkins was an amazing person. And that this board, when she was named Teacher of the Year, and then one of her relatives notified me that she was sick, that this board took action and we changed the policy to allow us to name buildings after people without them being dead. That was the policy before. And so I had the opportunity to be at the media center at Lake uh, Leesburg High School when that building was dedicated to her. And, and it's a small tribute, but one that will last forever and is her legacy. So I will share with you that she was absolutely amazing. And like you, Mrs. Palmer, until she was Teacher of the Year, I didn't know her either. But as soon as you met her, you felt like you knew her for years, right? So 
Uh, with all that said, when you when you mention someone's name, they're with you in spirit. And tonight, this room is full of Tammy Jerkins. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Luke. <laughs>